Hi, this is Karthik Rangappa and welcome to another Varsity video. And in this video, we'll talk about volatility. I understand we've spoken about volatility multiple times in the past, but given that volatility is so important with respect to option premiums, I thought it would be a good idea to have a quick tutorial on volatility and the different uses of volatility. Let's rewind and go back to basics. What is volatility? If you're talking about a stock, then volatility refers to the dispersion of stock returns over the period under consideration. Consider this. A stock has just IPO'd in the market and it's just been five days since it started trading. Since the stock is new to the stock market, price discovery is yet to happen, which means the fluctuation in stock price in the initial few days will be quite high. This also means the returns on the stock can fluctuate quite a bit. Intuitively, we know that the volatility is high for the stock in the initial few days. Now, when I say the volatility is high or low, what do I really mean by that? Well, that implies that volatility is a measurable variable. In fact, the measure of volatility is standard deviation and it's expressed as a percentage on an annualized basis. Higher the standard deviation of a stock, higher is the volatility and vice versa. Let me quickly demonstrate this with an example. I've got the stock price of Zomato for the first five days after it IPO'd. On these stock prices, I'll calculate what the volatility is. Now you can very easily calculate the volatility on Excel. All you have to do is calculate the stock returns and then apply the standard deviation function on Excel. Volatility for Zomato for five days is 6.36% but we will have to convert this to an annualized volatility for which we will have to multiply this by square root of time. Now don't worry too much about the math. All you have to remember is when you want to convert daily volatility in an annualized way, you just have to multiply with the square root of time. And there's a specific reason for that. Probably I'll do another video to explain why. But for now, let's just go ahead with this. The annualized volatility for Zomato now is 100.95%. And that is quite high. To put this in perspective, let me calculate the volatility of another stock. I've got the last one year data of a stock price here. The company that I've considered here is ABB. I've also calculated the daily returns of the stock. All I have to do is apply the standard deviation and calculate the volatility. As you can see, the volatility of this stock is just 2.26%. In fact, I would call this a low volatile stock. By the way, this also leads us to the first type of volatility that I would like to discuss, and that's the historical volatility. Historical volatility is very easy to calculate. All you have to do is consider the historical stock price, calculate the historical returns, and apply the standard deviation function, just like the way we did on ABB. Earlier in this video, I mentioned that option premiums are synonymous with volatility. Given the importance volatility has in option trading, traders like to forecast volatility to get a sense of where the volatility will be over the next few days. Forecasting volatility is extremely complex and quant heavy, but there is a way around this and I'll talk about it a little later in this video. So far, we've discussed what historical volatility is and also what forecasted volatility is. While the historical volatility could be one thing, and the forecasted volatility could be another thing, the actual volatility in the market could be totally different. And that's called the implied volatility. Implied volatility is the actual volatility that the market participants expect. To put this in context, historical volatility of ABB is 2.5%, but the implied volatility in the market could be 5%. Again, the process of calculating implied volatility is quite quant heavy. But platforms like Sensible gives you strike-specific implied volatilities, which you can check. Now here is a quick hack. You can compare historical volatility with implied volatility to forecast volatility. For example, I know historical volatility of ABB is 2.5% and the implied volatility is 5%, which is sort of high compared to historical volatility. Hence, I can conclude that the volatility will cool off in the coming days so my forecasted volatility could be something like 3 or 4%. So far, we've discussed historical volatility, forecasted volatility, 
and implied volatility. Of course, there are several nuances to all these volatilities, but let's not get into that in this video. The objective of this video is just to give you a basic understanding of different types of volatility and how they are interconnected. Let's move ahead to discuss one last thing before we conclude this video. The Volatility Index or the VIX Index. Here is NSE's fact sheet on India VIX. As you can see, VIX is developed using Nifty option prices and gives us a measure of what the volatility is likely to be over the next 30 days. So in a sense, this is the overall market's expectation of what the volatility is likely to be. So in other words, this is implied volatility forecasted for the next 30 days. Clearly, higher the VIX, higher is the volatility in the market. And for this reason, VIX is also called the fear index. VIX has a very strong negative correlation with Nifty. Meaning, when Nifty increases, VIX would crack. And when Nifty cracks, VIX shoots up. Or in other words, when Nifty cracks, the fear in the market increases and therefore VIX also increases. I've got this chart from NSE's fact sheet on VIX and you can clearly see the negative correlation at play. Option premium tends to increase when VIX shoots up. This is quite intuitive. An increase in VIX indicates an increase in fear levels in the market, which also implies that more people are trading options to hedge their positions and are willing to pay higher premiums. By the way, this also means that buying options when the VIX is high is a bad idea given that volatility is high and the premiums would have swelled. Likewise, selling options when VIX is really low is also a bad idea given that you are selling options when the premiums are quite inexpensive. Tracking VIX is also a good way to keep track of the overall market sentiment. Low VIX value indicates that the markets are calm and a high VIX value indicates that the markets are fearful. Of course, you can download the historical VIX value from NSE and see how VIX has performed historically and also map today's VIX value with respect to historical VIX values. Lastly, mathematically speaking, VIX is one standard deviation range for the market over the next one year. As I speak, India VIX stands at 19.06% and Nifty is at 17,600. This means markets can fluctuate 19% higher than 17,600 or it can move 19% lower from 17,600. Of course, if you understand the theory of standard deviation, you'll realize that this probability is 68%. If you're not clear about how I got 68% probability, then I would encourage you to read this chapter on Varsity to understand normal distribution and its properties. I hope this quick video gave you a quick sense of historical volatility, forecasted volatility, implied volatility, and what India VIX is. As an exercise, I would suggest you download the VIX value from NSE and plot this as a chart just to get a sense of how market sentiments have changed historically. Do drop a comment and let me know what you think. And I'll see you guys in the next video.